Hello, my sweet strangelings. On top of staying hydrated this summer, I've realized life's too short for a day without fun. So whether you're at the beach or traveling for a vacation, you can get a thrill whenever you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. Slotomania is a unique gaming experience with really beautiful graphics, huge jackpots, and fun freebies. If you're 21 or older, you can join millions of players around the world. Download Slotomania, the number one free slots game on the App Store or Google Play Store and get 1 million free coins. That's Slotomania on the App Store or Google Play Store for 1 million free coins. Hello, spooky friends. It's me, Blair Bathory, your horror host with the most, bringing you the scariest stories from around the world on the Something Scary podcast. It's officially summer where I live, and that means I can travel to even more haunted places. I've visited over 200 spooky sites in the last year and always post my findings on TikTok if you want to see where I've been. These locations inspire some of the terrifying tales I bring you every week. Most people go about their lives going to work or school, hanging out with friends and loved ones. The way we interact with people can have a deep impact on their well-being. What we might say in a passing moment can all add up. Say or do the wrong thing and it can consume someone and become catastrophic. You might be the one unknowingly spreading words of the wicked. First, a compelling ghost, followed by killer lies. Then, the parasite knows all. Finally, in our featured story, a cursed poem. I receive hundreds of creepy story submissions every single week. And of those, the scariest ones make it into our podcast, along with the story that we've chosen to animate and post over at youtube.com slash snarled. If you have a tale you're dying to share, send me an email at somethingscary at snarled.com. If you'd like to support Something Scary, then consider joining our Patreon. As a patron, not only can you help the show and see ad-free episodes, but you can also be a part of the horror and hear your name featured in one of our podcast or weekly video stories. Visit patreon.com slash snarled. So, want to hear something scary? Words of the Wicked. The Great House of Rose Hall in Jamaica has been restored at a cost of more than $1 million. Visitors now tour the mansion hoping to catch a glimpse of Annie Palmer, a ghost who is still said to roam the hallways. And maybe there's proof, like in this true story inspired by Ashley. Around four years ago, I visited one of Jamaica's most prominent haunted locations. On a hill 10 miles from Montego Bay stood the skeletal relic of Rose Hall, once the most magnificent house on the island. It was rumored to house the restless spirit of Annie Palmer, known as the White Witch of Rose Hall. The moon was full when I reached the high gate that barred the entrance to the estate. It was padlocked, but I couldn't let that deter me. Annie had already cast a spell of overwhelming curiosity ever since I learned about her in school. So I chose the only way in, up and over. Through the palm trees that lined the path to the house, the sea wind mumbled as if to announce my arrival to someone up ahead. The nighttime breeze was warm, but I shivered in the dark. Ahead of me stood the remains of Rose Hall, grim, brooding, and foreboding. It stared back with its empty windowed eyes, daring for me to come inside. A barbed wire fence girdled the decaying mansion. A sign posted warned visitors to enter at their own risk due to crumbling walls and a dilapidated roof. My sleeve caught on one of the wire barbs as I squeezed through, but I paid the pain no mind. Cautiously, I stepped inside the house. The floorboards had since rotted away, as had most of the housetop. The moon, shining through the latticework of what was left of the roof, made phantom white footsteps over the timbers and a hunk of masonry that had collapsed and fallen to the ground over the years. About 200 years ago or so, this great house, built at a cost of more than $150,000, had been lavishly splendid. Spacious piazzas and corridors and an elegant double flight of steps welcomed visitors. 
The house had 365 windows, one of each day of the year, 52 doors, depicting the weeks of the year, and 12 staircases, one for each month. It was a showplace, a grand and glorious Jamaican estate. Its last mistress, Annie Palmer, was a lustful, evil woman who committed atrocious murders within its walls. Supposedly endowed with the powers of black magic, she worked her slaves to death or killed them and her many lovers for the sadistic pleasure of being able to watch them die. She was finally strangled and buried in a nearby grave by someone who had braved her powers of dark magic. Legend said she continued to roam the ruins, dressed in white garments, unable to rest in peace and hoping for vengeance. Recalling the story, I shivered again and glanced at my watch. Midnight. If Annie was going to make an appearance, the time was now. The wind rattled a few loose boards, causing a few light pebbles to shift around. The old timbers groaned and creaked, all whilst I waited in uneasy suspense. Suddenly, I felt a light tap on my shoulder. My scalp tingled, hair stood on end, positive that I'd see a shrouded specter with a bony finger. I slowly turned my head, peeking cautiously out of the corner of my eye. Nothing. I brushed it off and began to breathe again. Somewhere in the house was supposed to be a deep hole that led to an underground tunnel in the sea, one of Annie's means of disposing of bodies. No one had found it yet. I didn't want to be the one to discover it the hard way. I stared through one of the windows, frozen in fear as the bushes outside rustled. Someone or something was coming through. I watched hypnotized as the brush parted and outstepped a cow. The house was completely open, so they probably took shelter here. Another sigh of blessed relief. For two more hours, I endured hair-raising moments, but no ghosts, and certainly not Annie. Yet there are spirits at Rose Hall. I didn't see them, to be sure, but somehow I could sense their presence, like an imprint on time. The most mournful entity was the house itself. Its haggard, bare bones begged to be either torn down or restored to some semblance of health. It had witnessed so much evil and it seemed to wish for a rebirth. As I walked back to the entrance gate, the cavernous window eyes stared sightlessly and hauntingly in my direction. I raced home and finally fell into bed, thankful to be back. You see, it was as if I had somehow been compelled to visit that house, to look for Annie, but now to my relief, it was over. The next morning, I awoke to find that I had a raging fever and had lost my voice with a case of severe laryngitis. The doctors told me that bad colds were extremely rare in Jamaica. But was it a cold? Or had I brought something home with me? After all, Annie doesn't live in that sprawling, ruined mansion anymore. Or does she? I've visited a few haunted houses in my day. Would you? If so, is there a particular one you've heard of or seen that you'd be willing to investigate? Let us know by emailing somethingscary@snarl.com and tell me which haunted house you would dare to visit. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a therapist in your pocket. That's why being able to reach out to my therapist or psychiatrist anytime from anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing if I need to talk with my therapist, I can just send a message from wherever I am. Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with my therapist isn't. I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and start therapy the same day as you sign up. You can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist, so it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Taking the first step towards getting help can be scary. For anyone who is looking to get started, I recommend Talkspace because they make it really easy to match with a licensed therapist and schedule a session. Talkspace takes some of the pressure off that first step. It's a more flexible and convenient way to get high quality care. Plus, there are several payment options to choose from. Talkspace 
is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can now get unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7 and they'll engage with you daily five times a week. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code SCARY to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's SCARY and Talkspace.com. Bachelorette parties allow us to celebrate the changes in our lives with our closest friends and share stories and memories that bring us together. However, not everything needs to be shared, like in this story inspired by Mina. Sharika, Heidi, and Shoshana had booked themselves into an Airbnb for Sharika's bachelorette party. The all-glass house was featured in Architectural Digest for its incredible 360-degree view of the Joshua Tree National Forest, California. The architects themselves, James McCoyan and Lillian Fabrice, spent years building the architectural masterpiece as their own home, only to never live in it and divorce shortly thereafter. It was a two-hour drive to Joshua Tree, and the girls sang along to a cheesy rock station the entire journey, excited to celebrate Sharika's impending nuptials. Upon arrival at the property, they found a bottle of champagne and a welcome note left for them. Welcome to our glass house. You are our first guest. Nothing is off limits, but please be aware that sound travels quickly through glass walls, so secrets are hard to keep and harder to forget. The girls found this note to be very bizarre, but quickly dismissed it. Nothing was going to dampen their high spirits. Heidi suggested that they change into bathing suits and hop into the jacuzzi for a nighttime game of Never Have I Ever. While the music was blaring, Shoshana started the game by asking the girls if they had ever stolen anything. Before her friends could answer, Shoshana herself blurted out that she had once stolen and read Heidi's journal. Shocked by her own admission, she quickly tried to cover it up by saying that it was just a mistake and that she had thought the journal was her own. Heidi was confused and hurt, but quickly blurted out that she once ran over a raccoon, but it didn't die quickly, so she had to run over it again. She had never told anyone that secret, and it haunted her for years. Sharika then announced that she always parked in disabled spots. Shoshana yelled out that she recently purchased a brand new fur jacket, but pretended that it was fake, knowing Heidi was vegan. Something strange was going on. The girls were telling secrets that they would never willingly share, but tumbling out of their mouths uncontrollably. Heidi was panicking. She couldn't stop sharing her most vulnerable thoughts. As the words spewed out of her, she suddenly got out of the jacuzzi. Her eyes turned black as she ran into the kitchen and grabbed a knife. She stood on the side, tears streaming down her face as she blurted out that she hated being a mother and wanted a divorce. She sliced into her mouth with the knife, cutting out her own tongue, hoping that would stop her from divulging anything else. Unfortunately, it didn't. Blood gushed out of her mouth as she continued to try and inaudibly share more truths. She fainted, sliding to the floor where she bled out. Sharika and Shoshana were of no help. They were consumed with revealing their own secrets. Shoshana confessed that she was having an affair with an engaged man. As she spoke the words, Sharika's eyes turned black. Shoshana knew that this was her final confession as she reached for the same knife that Heidi had used. She grabbed it and in a swift motion slit her own tongue out. Her final gurgles revealed her affair was with Sharika's fiance. Consumed with chaos and rage, Sharika stood over her dead best friends. She then grabbed the knife herself and looked at Shoshana and said, I knew. The next morning, housekeeping discovered the bodies of the three women. When police arrived, they were baffled by what had happened. The house was immediately taken off Airbnb. Further exploration divulged the architects James McCoyan and Lillian Fabrice had built the house on the ancient burial site of a priest who was known for his cruelty and his vengeance for truth. 
and it seemed he was still doing all he could to uncover the lies. Do you have a group of ride or die friends? Do you think you know everything about them? And are you hiding any dark secrets from them? All right, I'm a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes. I love mystery. So I have a question for you guys. What if Sherlock Holmes' most villainous nemesis was actually an innocent man? Don't miss the new Audible original Moriarty, The Devil's Game. It's a bold new addition to the Sherlock Holmes universe, starring Dominic Monaghan, Lord of the Rings trilogy lost in the title role. Moriarty turns one of the literature's most famous rivalries on its head. That's right, on its head. It pits genius against genius in an epic origin story that recasts Professor James Moriarty as a desperate fugitive, framed for murder. Haunted by dark forces who will stop at nothing, and I mean nothing, to exploit his brilliance. With Sherlock Holmes' Scotland Yard and the British Crown closing in on him, Moriarty must confront the ultimate question. What will it take to prove his innocence? And if he succeeds, what will he become? Moriarty, the devil's game. It takes a villain to create one. Hashtag Moriarty x Audible. Visit audible.com slash listen to Moriarty and listen now. What do you do when you think you're in control and then realize someone else is calling the shots and it will not end in your favor? Like in this story written by Janine Pipe. Celeste looked up at the apartment building. As a freshly trained social worker, she was full of hope and ambition, wanting to help and support the patients she was assigned. Today's patient was a bit of an anomaly. He hadn't been in the system long, and was awaiting a psych eval, but for now, she had been sent around to appraise his living conditions and see if she could perhaps coax any more medical history out of him, since he had refused to be checked over or to produce any records. As he opened the door to let her in, she was surprised he was wearing a beanie hat, pulled lower and covering almost all of his eyes. It wasn't midsummer, but it wasn't a cold day. Still, She recognized it may have been a comfort thing. He didn't remove the hat as she conducted her interview and seemed happy to answer most questions aside from details of his family practitioner or gaining access to medical history. When she would ask about it, he would get an almost pain look on his face. It would quickly return to normal once he'd started getting comfortable and then return as soon as she mentioned anything pertaining to a previous or current doctor. It was quite bizarre as if it physically hurt him to talk about it. He also seemed to be tiring quickly, so she wrapped up the conversation and he walked her to the door. Thanks. He managed, although again, it seemed almost forced. Celeste smiled and as she walked out, she could have sworn she heard another voice, perhaps a woman's whisper. You'll pay. But when she turned back, there was no one there. She got to the bottom of the stairs and opened her purse to grab her car keys. Annoyingly, she couldn't see them and after a good rummage, deduced she must have had them in her hand and when she entered the apartment, had left them on the couch. She headed back up and was about to knock on the door when she saw it was open, which wasn't very secure. She made a mental note to add something to the file. Hello? She called, but there was no reply. Feeling a duty to check on her patient, Celeste carefully entered the apartment. Eddie? Still nothing, so she stepped back into the living area, the couch and stealer of car keys now in eyeline. I'll just grab my keys and... Her thought was interrupted as she pocketed the keys by a strange sound. It seemed to be emanating from down the dark hallway, where she presumed the bed and bathroom would be. Eddie? She hurried into the dark and opened the door, which was already slightly ajar. It was indeed a bedroom, and she could just about make out a divan with a shape on top. Inching further into the room, she saw Eddie's feet and realized he was lying face down on the bed, She flicked on the light switch by the door and rushed over, wondering for just a second if he was groaning because he was choking. 
And then she saw it. Or her. Or, well, she didn't quite know, to be honest. Because Eddie was indeed laying face down on the mattress. But another face was staring at Celeste. A woman's face protruding at the back of his head. Celeste froze in shock and horror. What she was seeing made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Where his hair should have been was what she had heard referred to as a parasitic twin. Whilst Eddie's face had been placid, if sometimes fearful, this face was malignant, malevolence personified. And now it grinned at her, the slack features distorting as the mouth moved. It croaked. Celeste just stood there trembling, unable to answer. It suddenly screamed, jaws extending like a serpent. The high pitch of the shriek causing Celeste to fall to her knees in pain, slamming her hands over her ears. When she dared to peek again at the bed, Eddie had managed to turn his head slightly, enabling him to speak from his own mouth, whilst the thing on the back continued shrieking. With great effort, he was able to deliver one instruction. Run! And Celeste ran, not stopping until she reached her car. She sped back to the office, relaying her tale to a stupefied line manager. Phone calls were made, protocol adhered to, and within a couple of hours, they were back at the apartment. Having anticipated Eddie not being able to open the door, they broke in but were greeted by yet another surprise. The apartment was completely empty of any personal artifacts. There was nothing left to indicate Eddie and his twin had ever been there. And no matter how hard Celeste and others looked, they could find no trace. Have you ever felt like you had more than one personality? Like there was more than one of you inside yourself? How do you know you're the one that's in control and it's not a parasite lurking inside of you? Hello, my sweet strangelings. I had just moved to California not too long ago and finding a place is super hard. And I know a lot of us are always looking for the right place. And so I recommend apartments.com that has helped millions of renters and could help you find your perfect place. And yep, I know perfect is a tall order, but if you're looking for an apartment or a condo, townhome or house even, apartments.com has all the right tools to help you find it. Use filters and save searches to narrow down rental listings and find exactly the place for you. You can even set up alerts to get notified as places become available. So fashionistas, get your closet space or an in-unit washer and dryer. Sun lover, find as much natural light as you can handle. If you are working from home, you can have an area for your home office, an extra bathroom, a balcony, central air conditioning and heating, or a dishwasher in the kitchen. Whatever happens to be right for you, this is a place to find it. Apartments.com, the place to find a place. Hello, my sweet strangelings. On top of staying hydrated this summer, I've realized life's too short for a day without fun. So whether you're at the beach or traveling for a vacation, you can get a thrill whenever you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. You'll have endless excitement at your fingertips with 170 free to play slot games, huge jackpots, an interactive community, and millions of free coins. It's the perfect escape for your daily routine. Slotomania is a unique gaming experience with really beautiful graphics, huge jackpots, and fun freebies. And the rush you feel when you win a big jackpot is horrifyingly amazing. There are hundreds of original Vegas style and video slot machines ready to play whenever you are. It's like a Vegas vacation without the luggage. And by joining, you can interact with fellow players and form cooperative slotto clans with new friends or enter electrifying live tournaments. When your day is feeling stale, just ask, what will today spin? If you're 21 or older, you can join millions of players around the world. Download Slotomania, the number one free slots game on the App Store or Google Play Store and get 1 million free coins. That's Slotomania on the App Store or Google Play Store for 1 million free coins. In our final story, join my co-host Stephanie as she tells the story of Japanese poet Saijo Yaso, who published a poem in 1919 about the destruction and devastation of war. He poured his heart and soul into the work, so much that the urban legend says the poem is cursed. 
Miu's eyes flew open as she gasped for air. She didn't know why she was standing outside on the ground, surrounded by emergency workers, or how she even got there. She looked beside her bed and saw the book titled Sokken, meaning gold dust. And that's when everything came flooding back. Miu had always been different, or according to her father, a disappointment who worked in a coffee shop. She had just graduated from Osaka University and was supposed to be headed to medical school. But she never really cared about helping people. Instead, Miu longed to become a successful poet. She took a job as a barista so she could make ends meet while pursuing her dreams. After going through tons of books in the library, she headed to the desk to check them out. The librarian scanned each book, then came to a sudden halt as she held up a collection of poetry titled Sokken. Where did you find this? She asked in surprise. It wasn't supposed to be on the shelf. The librarian told Mio it was not to be borrowed. The book contained a cursed poem called Tomino's Hell. Anyone who read it or heard the poem out loud suffered terribly, often fatally. The famous director, Suji Teriyama, had made a movie based on the poem and had then died young. Some blamed his sudden death on the curse. The panicked librarian set the book aside while the librarian helped the next customer. Mio snatched the forbidden book from the counter and headed to work. Asuka, Mio's manager, called her out for being late again, but she paid a mind to her manager, instead began to daydream, eventually rhyming words, dancing through her head as she went through the motions of making mocha macchiatos. She snapped back to reality quickly when Asuka posted a sign that read, Open Mic Night. Mio decided this was her chance to sign up and recite a poem she had in her journal. As she flipped through her journal, she began to have second thoughts. Instead, she figured she would look for inspiration in other books she had. The next day, Mio told Asuka she wouldn't be performing her poem. Asuka laughed, saying she knew Mio would bail. Asuka chuckled at her with that mockingbird screech. Her face lit up with joy at her employee's expense. It was in that moment that Mio snapped back and said, actually, I am going to read a poem, just not my own. When it was her turn, she pulled out the forbidden book she'd stolen from the library. She finally read Tomino's poem. It was as dark and twisted as she hoped, and it strangely comforted her. The story of Tomino's descending into hell resonated with her deeply. She felt herself spiraling towards darkness, questioning if she'd chosen the right path in life. Tomino's hell, elder sister vomits blood, younger sister breathing fire, while sweet little Tomino just spits up the jewels. All alone does Tomino go, falling into that hell. The poem was gruesome, not to Asuka's taste, and she turned quickly to go into the kitchen, not realizing she knocked over a candle. Mio continued. A hell of utter darkness without even flowers. Is Tomino's big sister the one who whips him? The purpose of scourging hangs dark in his mind, lashing and thrashing him. Ah. Mio saw a flame out of the corner of her eye. In the back, a tablecloth was on fire. But with all eyes on her, she didn't want to pass up the attention. With a smile, Meal read on. Into the blackest of hells, guide him now, I pray. When her audience finally smelled the smoke, they bolted towards the exits, but the route to the front door was covered in flames. The side door had been locked to keep anyone from sneaking into the open mic night. Asuka's fingernails tore and bled from clawing at it, trying to get out, but they were all trapped. Despite the blood curdling screams and the flames closing in, Mio kept reading. She was determined to finish the cursed poem. And that was the last thing she remembered before waking up disoriented outside the smoking cafe, realizing she had been rescued by a firefighter. She saw Asuka's dead, burnt body laying close by, covered in ash. Mio couldn't help but wonder if the curse was real. Now that was poetic justice. Mio figured she would find out for sure when she read the poem again at the next open mic night.
This week's podcast stories were edited by Sarah Lukasiewicz, Janine Pipe, and Stephanie Strange. Narration by Blair Bathory and Stephanie Strange. Audio edited and mixed by Fitz Harris. Additional audio editing by Calvin Linderman. Art and graphics by Irma Richardson. Produced by Anna Villalobos. Executive produced by Gail Gilman. Music by Sapphire Sandalo and Calvin Linderman.